bonus with face, pat, and tiz. Um, what's up, guys? This is banana. Oh, okay. Well, what's up, guys? Welcome to the partners show with three friends, separated by business, <laughs> connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. And this week, uh, it's gonna be a dope week here, man. Uh, we're actually separated by way less distance. We are. This is the first time we're recording this, and we're all in the same state. Um, yeah. Literally less than an hour and a half separates all three of us. Uh, so it's a dope moment in time. Um, you'll, you'll probably see vlogs later on this week uh, of us actually in the same spaces at the same time, which would be the first for most of y'all. Um, so, yeah, man, it's going to be a dope week. Uh, obviously, Christmas just passed, so that makes it dope. But I am here with the illustrious. I am only one third of them. It's your boy, Tiz. I'm only one third of the partner. But I got my bros with me. We in VA. I'm with. The other third is right here. And I'm I'm probably about maybe like 30 minutes away from the other third, an hour and 30 from the other third. But yeah, it's the Padawan here. And I am along with with a less dramatic pause. What's that, and man? It's facing the place, man, not in the country. Where I'm still a short distance from my partner was happening. Indeed, man. Ooh. The Triforce is complete. Um, yeah. He's out here, man. It's episode 58. It's season two. Um, it's close to the new year. Um, it is an hour and what 33 minutes from my birthday, which means it's 25 hours and 33 minutes from Pat's birthday. Hey. Um, just a cool yeah. last week, man. The new year's at the end of this week. So uh, we out here, man. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, we about to talk that shit this week. Um, how y'all doing this week, man? How y'all feeling? I, obviously, I'm feeling good. How y'all feeling? I'm silly as a bitch out here. And in this year, some silly shit instead of some hostile shit like I could. I could. But I'm in it on some silly shit to bring in the new year or some positive shit you feel me because i in the i'm leaving off the negativity of the past year and years and i'm coming into the new year with nothing but positivity i see it in my future i see it in my future nothing but positive things you feel me so i'm gonna claim it now i'll make my new year's resolution now before the new year that's it i can keep on going into it you feel me i'm not gonna do i'm gonna get healthy i'm gonna get on the diet i'm gonna lift weights no I'm going to strive for more positivity in myself and my surroundings. That's my new year. It's not even my new year. That's my new life resolution. Let's get it, I love it. it. I love it. Padawan. Well, uh, the one is a lot healthier, a lot uh, feeling better in spirits. I found out I still have my birthday off, so that's great. Just my check might be a little bit weak the next week, but, you know. Yeah, it's just a little bit. It's weak, a give and a take. It is a give and a take. I'll take um, mental stability and mental health over the checks any day. Appreciate yeah, that good yeah. word, bro. Pretty much. much. That's, well, that's the, that, that mental health, boy. Boy, boy, boy. Peace. Yeah. Inner peace. And I'm hoping, so much uh, more than a dollar. I'm yes. hoping I get my holiday. Um, off for like the 31st so that way i don't have to worry about i can give me a good four-day weekend and yes so, sir yes sir on that but yeah all, everything's all in good spirits here i had i had the weekend off but i chose to work on the first because the way i look at it i get holiday pay plus the regular pay too so i mean that's hey, real i, I revamped that christmas money like, this is a lesson yeah. to all y'all young folks out there who like to have your birthdays and every holiday off. Ain't nothing wrong with having your birthday off. Nothing wrong with them. Celebrate you. When it comes to these holidays, if you ain't doing shit, good work. I always say, 
I don't if you ain't doing shit, <laughs> go to work. <laughs> I never go out and do if I, if I gotta go to choice between going to work and making money or going out and spending money. I'm gonna choose the one that's bringing income in instead of the one that's taking money out of my pocket. Yeah. So this is a life lesson to y'all, young folks, man. I know y'all in y'all party years, but guess what? When the partying stops, I hope the money is still there. If it ain't, start saving today, man. My whole thing, positivity, financial literature, financial literacy, everything going forward. Every week, you go ahead and see something about some money, man. So, hey, it might get annoying, but if you listen, you can save some money, put some money back in your pockets, man. Mm-hmm. Ka-ching, ching. Um, we all Capricorns, and we all workaholics, mind that. But, yeah. <laughs> yes. Also, um, recently, just getting into Bitcoin. Invest in any coins that are going to be used in the upcoming metaverse. Invest in them now. If you invest in them now, um, if you get on stuff like KuCoin, you can go ahead and invest in them now. And trust me, they're going to go up. And when the metaverse launches, you will be rewarded. Just trust me. Take that little piece of advice from your boy, Tears. Bang, bang. Speaking of money. I'm going to have to get right back with you with that, too. Yeah, I'm going to... Uh, right. <laughs> Don't get deterred by stuff like stocks and Bitcoin. Don't get deterred that you got to come in with some big dollars. You don't. You can come in small and uh, get your way up there. You feel Man, me? get somebody that got a wallet already to send you a referral link where you come in with a free stock or a free piece of Bitcoin and use that free piece to start your journey. You spent nothing. Everything. You spent hard. nothing, you've helped a friend, and you've now started your journey in that thing without spending your own bread. That's my biggest advice to people. Like, there's ways to enter these realms that we've previously thought were untapped or unavailable to us without having a lot of capital. You can start, uh, you can add face in the man. We all started our Robin Hood portfolios with like either the free stocks. Or like a dollar, ten dollar. Like we didn't put no big money into it. We just let that grow. But that's an investment in the future because you're looking at the ten years down the line get back, not tomorrow. So like, put your money in some stuff, man. And uh, I, as I go through my journey, I'm gonna shoot y'all some of my advice, man. But yeah, definitely invest in any coin that's gonna be used in the metaverse because when the metaverse launches, that shit is gonna drive up. And when it gets launched on bigger sites like Coinbase and stuff like that, if you own KuCoin already or like one of those sites that allow you to buy coins early, when they release, you're going to, and everybody in the market is fully open to everybody, like your your money is going to go up. And yeah, so you could take $10 and turn it into 30. You could take $10 and turn it into a thousand. You never know. But if you was going to go buy you an impossible WAP or some dumb shit anyway, go ahead, buy you, go ahead, buy you a little, little stuff like face was saying man yeah i'm gonna tell you like this man this is my plan if you got kids and your kids are really young you ain't thinking about college right now most people ain't thinking about college especially if you got toddlers man but what that you can do is always put away for something for tomorrow so what you can do get your kid a piggy bank man both of my kids in the house got piggy bank my oldest already got a bank account we ain't talking about bank accounts here we talking about fill that piggy bank up when the piggy bank is filled go to a coin star Get that money turned or go, go to a bank either way, but get your money back. Yep. Take that money and invest in a stock for your child. I don't know what say it. Invest that money in a stock for your child. Yeah. Start back over. Piggy back up. Invest in another stock for your child. Get your child five stocks. Get their portfolio started early. Educate them because the earlier you start financial education with your kids, the better off they are. Yeah, I tell my kids every time we get any money, there's three things you can do with money that's real good. You can save it, you can invest it, or you can purchase something that improves with value. I'm not talking about cars, I'm not talking about jewelry, let's appreciation, precious metals. If you're talking about precious <clears throat> metals, cool, but I'm talking about art and land. That's what I tell my kids about. And we starting at seven and four. So get your kids into this mindset, man. Money is all around them, and money makes this yeah. world move. I'm, I'm looking, looking at this NFT stuff. Some type of capital. You don't want to leave this earth early and let your kids not have that mental <clears throat> head point. I need this or I need to be able to do this. Just Big get these facts. kids right now. Once again, financial education. And along that line, man, I was going to say, man, you got kids are like a big thing that we do. It's like 
we take when we go to the store and we purchase stuff, we talk to our son along the way and like are telling him, like, okay, so this is why we would buy this brand over this brand, or why we would purchase this over this. So like, so if you if you do this, you get four of these for the same price as this, but they're the same thing. You see, like this is how you read, like it's amazing. And now like our son now is to the point where like he has his own wallet, like he has three different little areas. He got his bank account for his like, you know, his future. That's 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 college. That's your nest egg. If you want to start a business when you graduate high school, that's your that's your financial future. Then you got your piggy bank. That's like your big savings that's going to go towards your savings. But it's like a way to like collect your money in a safe place. You know where it's at, and you can kind of keep tabs on it and see what different coins you're putting in, what different bills you're putting in, and along the way, you can kind of watch your money grow at home. And then you got your wallet. <clears throat> That's why you keep your little $25, your little $20. That's your spending money. So when you go to the store, we let him purchase stuff, and he didn't got to the point now, he didn't got smart, like, well, okay, if I'm going to go buy a toy, well, take me to the Dollar Tree, Daddy, because I can get five toys for the price of what I would have got not even a whole toy at Walmart. So just take me there then, daddy, because then I can get five things and then I still have some money left over. So when I want, when we stop at the store on the way home, I can give me a little dessert too because I like to get a snack. So like, like teaching your kids how to just purchase stuff, how money works, how deals work, how coupons work, like just the basics, the shit they used to teach you at home ec, but now home ec ain't in schools. You know what I mean? I think that's super important. I love that you touched on that face like, the importance of like not just holding it to our generation, but like making sure that kids are growing up understanding like what the value of a dollar is, how to use it, how to operate within a financial system and use it to your benefit at an early age. So by the time they get to be an adult, they're making less mistakes and, and able to make more gains at an early age. That's real. I love when my kids go to the store and look for sale. My oldest, she's 13. She sent me a Christmas list with the sale prices. You feel me? I like that type of shit because my kids are in the mindset of financial literacy and financial value. They see the value in a dollar, but they also say, okay, I want this, but this called the same price as this. I can get this for this price, the same thing as that, same thing I can do. You feel me? Most adults have a hard time getting that concept, but most kids are in the concept of, I want the biggest, the brand newest, this, this, this. But once you get your kids in the, in the mindset of, Money don't grow on trees. Money is a real thing. You feel me? Like I got to earn my money. You feel me? My kids work. You feel me? If I'm not at my regular job, I door dash. Who don't like extra money? I capitalize on y'all laziness. Someone yeah. bringing you food, you lazy ass don't want to go get it. But guess what? My kids gonna go get the room inside to get the food. They gonna bring it to the car. I'm gonna bring it to you. So we gonna split that so I can have them knowing the value of earning a dollar. You feel me? I was working since I was 14. I started mine. Yeah, 13. yeah, yeah. Right now, at my age, I've been working more than 20 something years. How many people 10 years older than me can say that? No, nah, y'all can't because y'all work to take your retirement. I could have been retired. When I get to retirement age, I'll be way past the years. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I've been paying Social Security since I was 14. Like, I'm 20 years in with that. My right. kids going to value the dollar, baby. We need to teach our kids, man. Black Lives Matter, yeah, they do, <laughs> but it starts here. Yeah, you gotta unlock your mind for anything else. Can move. This, this gotta work. This gotta work. You can be as woke as you want, but y'all still woke as shit and broke as shit at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Be awake with some money in your hand, some lucrative money in your hand. Get some residual income coming in. You don't know what residual income come in means. Money keep coming back to itself. It works for itself. Keep that. Passive income. You, you sit on your ass and the money continues to generate whether you're doing anything or not. Yeah, That's the goal behind us doing this right here. Is to let this be the main thing. Everybody, there's a lot of people who do this podcast and just, just to do. Even We started out just to do it. But our goal, the end goal, is to make this what we do for fun and a living. Because if you can find something that's lucrative for you, that you enjoy too, you've mastered the game. Most Indeed. people find something lucrative for them that they despise, they hate, it's stressful, it gives them anxiety, i.e. me and Pat, you feel me? like, I hate, I hate going, getting up and going to work. You feel me? I used to break down on the way to work and like have crying fits, shaking fits, all this shit, just the anxiety of going into a building 
because I don't want to deal with the bullshit. Well, that I couldn't deal with it. It's just mentally, it's, it's something up here that wouldn't click with that. Yeah, it doesn't feel right with your spirit, man. Me. You feel me? Like, and that's it. I had to find something that I enjoy doing that was also lucrative. I'm really happy right now. Sure, we have the store, we have the podcast, I have the dog thing. I have a lot of avenues of revenue that I'm trying to play off. And that's what we need. But at the same time, I'm happy in each instance. That and that's just makes the thing. And here I'm not I, your I don't want people to get it fucked up. Like, that shit ain't like we trying to advocate you chasing, like, you got to be rich. I don't really feel that. Like, I don't look at it like you got to be mm-hmm. wealthy to be happy. But I do know that, like, living in the society we live in, you need a certain amount of money, no matter what your lifestyle. If you want to live a minimalist lifestyle, $10,000 might be your happiness mark. For $10,000, mm-hmm. you might be able to purchase everything you can, but you still need a way to get that $10,000. So when we talk about financial literacy, we were talking about being able to use the money that you do need for whatever lifestyle you personally love that's going to make you content and peace and have peace in your heart and be able to take care of your family mm-hmm. the way you want to, however that is. Like, how to maximize that and make that last pass just like, I did this for a year and then next year I'm back to the point where like money is stressing me. Like for me, like right now, like I'm not rich by any means. I'm far from that, but I'm at my personal, like when I was growing up and I had dreams a bit, like a lot of people dreamed of like having jobs or dreamed of being this and that. Like I dreamed of being a dad and a husband. Like, so like, this is my ideal life. Like I have two cars, I have a home, I have a home with stairs, so I got a upstairs and downstairs. I have a man area. I have all of the things that in my head meant success. I have a wife, a healthy relationship. I have a son. I'm a good dad. Like, I'm I'm really complete. At this point, it's me trying to figure out how do I now eliminate the other things outside of that parameter that caused me stress and maximize the longevity of me being able to keep this ideal situation going so you know i mean and i think that's that should be the goal like financial literacy shouldn't be like i'm trying to outdo everybody because then that's when you get stuck into those mentalities i'm chasing the dollar instead of chasing happiness like chase happiness and the dollar will come like you will eventually even if you're never like mega wealthy you will be at a point where you will find that your bills are paid you're able to live a lifestyle that makes you happy and you're able to take care of the people that you want to take care of but you're chasing happiness which means that your inner spirit stays good and i think that what face was saying like basically like like don't don't ever get it twisted you know what i'm saying like we we love financial literacy but i think the biggest thing that i've talked about this year and that we really stressed as a collective is like making sure your mental and your heart is right like get that spiritual health right that mental health right so that you feel good every day because it don't make no sense to be rich as fuck everybody in your your family wealthy as hell you taking care of the world but you're miserable every day you can't even enjoy the fact that you're taking care of the people you love you can't even enjoy the yachts and the mansions and all of that. Like I'd rather be at a good place, but be happy every day. Like wake up genuinely excited to get up in the day. Cause like the things in my life are at least the things that make me content. Like I have things set up in a way that I can feel great about it every day. And that's I'd say the happiest I've been in the past few years and when I was employed by myself. You feel me? I was at home when I needed to be at home. I got to see the kids when I got to see the kids. For some people, that don't mean shit. But I, it means a lot to me because the first eight years of my oldest life, I was at work damn near 24-7. You feel me? I miss countless birthdays. I miss countless Christmases because her birthday is right around the corner of Christmas. Those are blackout days. You can't take your time off. So it fucked me. So being able to watch these kids grow and just form their personalities and form the bonds with them, that meant the world to I me. Mean, I was the happiest and shit. You feel me? Sure. Who don't want to be out getting the bread like they want to? It's nine to five, whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm employed myself. I was employed by myself. You feel me? So every dollar I got, I earned. There was no vacation pay. It was none of that. It was get your ass up early in the morning, go get that money, come back, do what you need to do, pay these bills. And that was it. Some people that stressful. I was the happiest I've been in a long, long 
time. I had found my niche. I found my groove. I could be in my own little zone. You feel me? I, I, I worked the same. I was out working a job. I put my 10 hours in, doing what I was doing. Came home. Cool. Don't do nothing illegal because I ain't going to backslide and do nothing stupid. But I was employed. I employed myself. You feel me? Got to pay taxes on what I was doing. So when that poem come in January, I'll be getting that money too. But my thing is, like my brother said, find your happiness in what you do. Yeah. Financial, as long as you're smart and plan it like you should with your financial education, that happiness and that find that heart happiness, mental happiness, and financial happiness will all line up and it will to come together and form a triangle, a pyramid, the strongest thing. You feel you feel me? Like, come on, we keep bringing it back there, man. Bring them sides together. Financial, mental, and health. Let's go. Indeed, man. The triangle, baby. The pyramid, the symbol of the partners. Y'all already know, man. Like, that's what it's all about, man. It's, it's one of the strongest structures. But you get that, you get that mind and that spirit right and that body right. Like the finances, the family, all that other stuff is starting to work because you are your best self. So you're able to give everything. When you when you struggling on the inside, like it's hard to give anything because everything is like an extra lift. And, and I think like that's the place I'm at now. Like I, I've gotten to a place of like Zen where I've accepted. Like that's it. Damn, come on, epiphany. That's it. It's acceptance. You happiness is acceptance. So when you're chasing happiness, you're really chasing a place of being able to accept everything in your life on a daily basis. And that's the hard part, like getting there. But if you can get there to where like you have accepted what you do and it makes you content and you've accepted your family life and it makes you consent and you've accepted your social life and it makes you content and you've accepted your finances and they make you content and you've accepted your living situation and it makes you content like that acceptance allows you the peace to be happy but you got to get there and I think financial freedom allows you to get there a little bit like like again I ain't rich but the fact that I ain't stressing about bills no more allows me the mental clarity to be able to now deal with anxiety and get back to a pace of being whole it allows me to deal with oh well this emergency popped up and i don't break now because i can i got to focus enough to be able to deal with that as opposed to being so burdened by this this bill that i can't pay or this oh man my light's about to be off or this mortgage i can't pay you know what i mean so i think that's the key to finances man like if you don't learn nothing else this year my my pod my pod squatters Use it to find that that peace, man. Because and, and and peace has a different number for everybody. So don't get stuck on like I have to be a millionaire or a billionaire or a trillionaire. It may for you, you may be a uh, ten thousand there, but for what you? Because I uh, shout out to this lady named uh, I don't know, y'all. She done been up on the panel before. Sometimes I get carried away. Her name uh-huh. like Carrie Ann, but uh. I, she lives like this more minimalist lifestyle as far as like her housing. Like she she's a single, so she lives in a smaller house. Like and she does all this shit by purpose so she can use her money for other things. And for her, like that piece is like it, she ain't no billionaire, but she lives the lifestyle that makes her happy. And that's the shit I'm I'm looking at. Like I, we should all get there. Like if forty thousand gives you what you need, then find a way to maximize that forty thousand and build it longevity wise. Like so that for the rest of your life, you can hit that forty thousand mark and stay in that place of comfort and peace. If it's a hundred thousand, then put your work to that. Like and it starts with small steps. Like Bill Gates didn't build Microsoft overnight. Steve Jobs didn't build Apple overnight. Mark Zuckerberg and Bill Facebook overnight. It started with like small steps and in increments. They built onto the last thing that they did. And then they look up 20 years down the line and they have this empire or, you know, 10, 15 years down the line, they have this empire. So, you know, stick with us. That's what the partner's about to do. You know, this is only year two, baby. I'm glad I stuck with Tesla on my, on my stock. I'm telling you, see? And that, and that, and that has been a constant growing. Like, my uncle has flipped that stock so many times to the point where, like, that's one of his strongest things in his portfolio. And it came from just starting with like 
a little bit here and there as he got paid and you just build up and build up. And then next thing you know, that investment that you put that little bit of time and effort into every week, you look up and it's grown into that fruitful thing. It's like, it's like a child. Your money should be like a child. Like you put whatever you invest into your child, that's what that's the adult they're going to grow into. Like I, I look at, all of the successful adults, all of the adults that I respect and love in my life, they all had great parenting where parents were highly invested, put a lot of work into it. And it wasn't perfect every day, but they continuously grew on top of the last thing. And now this adult is out here in the world that ain't doing great. So I think that treat your money like that. Like you, it ain't gotta be perfect every day. You gonna take some losses along the way, but if you're consistent, you just take them little increments, the little baby steps, the baby steps. The baby steps get there. Financial happiness is not a monolith. Come on now, just realize that we always say black people are not a monolith, but we condition ourselves not just black people, all Americans. We've all conditioned ourselves to see financial happiness as the same exact thing. It's not a monolith yeah. to, each his own. to each his own on every level, man. Okay, that ain't, that ain't in the Bible, but to each his own. It's just as hard as I for an eye, be good to another. To each his own. You your own competition. You don't have to comp- compete with John, Dick, and Barry. Compete John, just- Dick, and Larry. Not yeah, Tom, like- Dick, and Harry, but John, Dick, and Larry. <laughs> Who the hell is Larry? Lawrence you know, Fishburne. My thing is, compete with yourself. You know what you mean for a Saturday last year? Attempt to do better this year. <clears throat> That's, that's your goal. You feel me? Set your own personal goals based on you. Don't look at Jay Z and be like, I'm going to be a millionaire like Jay Z. No, that may not be in your capabilities. And you may feel like you're failing when you're really winning in your own zone. Look at yourself financially with realistic eyes. Set your realistic financial goals and slowly but surely gain on top of gain on top of gain. But like my brother said, it takes work, it ain't easy. But nothing in life is worth doing is ever easy. Big fact. Just a good thought from face. No lies detected. Smell yourselves, motherfuckers. Yeah. Self motivation, self elevation, self liberation. It never went nowhere. I may stop talking about it, but it's always ever present. The principles are there at all time. Smell your motherfucking self. Yeah, I'm right. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, when you. Well, you were talking about your son and wallets earlier. I, it reminded me. I did see that new wallet he gave you for Christmas. That shit. Yeah, fly. that's not that's that, not shit shit. Fly. that shit is fly, man. I love that shit, man. And, and it's funny, yo. It's so, like, man, my son's so fucking dope, man. Like, he is the most thoughtful person ever. Like, he literally, he, I hadn't said nothing at all buy what I needed but he was with his mom and she was out buying her gifts for me and he was like I know it's perfect for daddy I want to get him a wallet now mind you I, again I hadn't said nothing to him now he's already bought the wallet the wallet's already in the house they didn't already did they little sneaky shit where they done wrapped it up I don't notice at the time but it's already under the tree like I can already see all my gifts under the tree at this point so I, we at the store and he's like, Daddy, why you don't never what, bring your wallet in the store? You know, you told me a oh, man should already have his wallet on him. I was like, well, my wallet is uh, pretty bad off, son. I done had my past wallet and been through a few car accidents. And uh, yeah, my, my wallet don't hold nothing no more, son. If I put anything in my wallet, it fall right out into my pocket, son. So I just been uh, waiting till I buy myself a new wallet. My kid done already observed this shit on his own, like. Man, yo, like, this kid is the, the dopest kid ever, man. I, I've never... I, 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 he's the upgrade, man. <laughs> yeah, that wallet is fucking amazing, man. It's this beautiful leather. It, it's like, oh, man, it's amazing, dude. Got got the got, 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 got the Jesus cross on there, so you know that touched my heart because, you know, me and him be getting our prayers in and it meant a lot to me. Yeah, man, my, my son dope, man. But, yeah. That's cool. You got Jesus watching over your money, so that, that's, that's bruh, pretty safe. Bruh, if my shit don't <laughs> multiply this year, something wrong, man. You feel me? But yeah, um, 
it's already working though. Like I said, I got a special bonus coming from the job that I had not realized that's uh, about to drop uh, <laughs> on New Year's Eve. So God, thank God Almighty. Uh, which is beautiful because I want to buy I want to buy a wife a new stove for her birthday. So that's right on time. Well, that's what's up. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So you would have a bonus drop like it's a mixtape. Yes, man. And why are we just talking this random talk? If you live out there and you're a pod squatter and you have not invested in this, while we talking about smart investing, invest in a fucking air fryer. Bought my wife one for Christmas. Man, shit has changed our life in, in, in just a few days. Um, oh my right. fuck God, you cook anything in that shit. And it takes like, takes like three to 15 minutes and whatever you want it is ready for you, cooked to perfection. With a beautiful crisp on the outside and a juicy inside, and it's just amazing. Pause on, I don't know how that sounded, but shit, it's amazing, man. Um, if you have not entered the air fryer life, whether you get the big boy, you know, get the big boy seven quarter, or you get the little ones, get you an air fry. Yeah. This shit is amazing. I yeah. did not know, but I, I am. Yes. Every day I think about the inventor of the air fryer. Man, that shit is amazing. I've been looking at that shit for the past like year and a half, two years. You know, since the pandemic hit, I've seen a lot of people talking about them, but I was like, you know, I don't really get the big deal, but I get the big deal. Yes, air fryers are the shit. Now, I bought it for my wife, but I have definitely enjoyed it probably more than she had. Uh, (laughs) Chicken for Christmas. Yeah, chicken for Christmas dinner. Put that right in the air fryer. Love that. If it's a choice between using the air fryer and the stove, if I turn the stove on, the wife's like, turn that shit off. The air fryer's right there. <laughs> yeah, my, my wife was so happy. She was like, <laughs> all of the other mothers and wives have had it for so long. Thank you. you now I can show my face again. I was like, oh, I had no idea. Had you let me know sooner? I did not know. Oh I'm so God. glad I you can now go amongst your, your your peers again and be be respected. I had her out here looking like she a Broncos fan like me when it talk come to talking football, man. It was like I, I didn't know I had her out here in the obscure table. I got her back at the I got her back with the cool kids, man. Fellas, if you don't know, get your wife an air fryer if she ain't got one. She will thank you. Trust me. Didn't the Broncos live the other day? Uh, we might have. You know, we all good. Man, he think. rolled in like the evil genius. I mean, but, 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 didn't the, didn't but, this the, but this the funny part, though. Do we want to compare records this year? Because I noticed you and Jews been real quiet this year. It's been real silent from both of y'all this year. It's been a whole lot of talk in the other year, but it's been real quiet from them terrible town motherfuckers this year. So I'm just saying, if we want to talk, we can talk about who, who got the better record and all of that good stuff. I ain't tripping. I ain't tripping. I mean, we can pull up the AFC rankings real quick. You know, if, if we if we really want to talk, you know, we can pull up the AFC rankings from the past few years since y'all lost Antonio Brown and we really want to talk. I, I'm just saying, I don't want to get too deep in it. But I know, you know, yeah. We ain't looking too different right now, so I, I don't really see the difference. But y'all got a Hall of Fame quarterback. We got a bunch of replacements. And we're still looking pretty fucking even. He's at the end of his road, man. Can we, can, we, can we not do this? I don't think we want to talk football on there. I think we both want to be quiet and let these people who got winning records this year, you know, shine. We but that's just, we, we can agree that's just me, you know. <laughs> We, we can agree on that. Just saying. Mm-hmm. Bron- Neither the Broncos nor the Steelers got air fryers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we all, they all at the, the lame kids club this year. Yeah. yeah. We'll be back one day. But um, yeah, I don't got nothing else in the random talk, but I will say, man, I don't smell nothing coming on my air fryer, but I do smell that it's that time. Oh, I got one. Oh, hold on. I might have been smelling it. I got one thing. Hit me. I got one thing. I got one thing before you look at that watch. Now I was watching the um 
the I forgot the, the real name of Mad Pop and shit. That um his shit. The, my the expert Papa opinion. Shit. Yeah. So I don't know if it was a new episode or an old episode, but they was having. A, I think it was an old episode, something not too old, but they were discussing the black community, right? And they were talking police and it. And one guy, ex-con, he was arguing the point. And he froze. He don't trust no cops. Then he don't want to hold on, hold on. No Run that back. He froze he was, for a second. He was, he was, he was discussing. Um, they were discussing police in the black community, and he had one dude on the panel. He was a um former ex con, ex um ex dealer, and to his um. To his side, he was like, I don't ever want to hear nobody say it is no good cop. They, I see him as all the same thing. But me listening to his his statement, he was like, I don't have no time to, what's the word he said? I don't have no time to try to distinguish between good ones and bad ones. Mm-hmm. That's the same mindset bad cops have. They don't have the time to distinguish between the good ones and the bad ones. So then they shoot all of them. You feel me? It's yeah. the same mindset. So if you share the same mindset with the thing you hate, aren't you aligning yourself with that exact thing you hate? Well, yeah. what, what's your real rationale? You, your rationale is, is really you, you trapped your own mind in the mind of your enemy. Because the same thought process you have now, they have. So you have no time to distinguish between the good and the bad, but you get mad at them for not distinguishing between the good and the bad. And that's why you have the stance that you have because they don't have no chance, don't have no time to distinguish. So it's like an entendre after an entendre. But the real truth of the matter is we all truly have time to distinguish. Because before we go into a situation, we already see the elements in a situation. It's all about a choice we make. To me, we all make a choice. Police make a choice. Black folks make a choice. Whatever color you are, or race, I should say, because we're not colors. We it's just pigment on our skin. We don't choose it. Make yeah. a choice. You, you can you can choose to make your good choice or bad choice. Now, me personally, I've made bad choices, but my bad choices have not led me down an extreme bad road. I was smart enough to get out where it would need be. Now, those who have made bad choices and didn't get out where need be. I feel that your viewpoint on the other side of the law or those who are chosen to enforce the law, excuse me, is like that because of the decision you chose to make. Right. You go against that. So in essence, you made someone who defends the law your automatic enemy by choosing to break the law. Right. Now, we all have made our decisions for whatever reason we have, good or bad. You may have done something to provide for your family, and that's why you made the decisions you had, and you, you chose me. You may did something just because you wanted more money, and you were just, fuck it, I just want to do it because I'm going to do it. You may have, as they say, jumped off the porch just to be like everybody else. But whatever your decision was, it was a decision that was made. Yeah. I want people to start being more responsible for their decisions. Because this is your decision that was made. The counteract to your decision should not mold your mindset. Your mindset should already be molded before you made your decision. Before I choose to step forth in any arena, I need to know about that arena. I need to know my pros, my cons, my good, my bad. What may happen, what may not happen. Because if I don't, whatever happens is my fault. Not somebody else. See, I don't think that mentality comes from not not knowing, like not knowing what the dangers are, or not assessing everything before you step into it. I think that mentality comes from not accepting. Like you are good with the parameters of things when they're working for you. I'm not caught. I'm not involved with the police. They're not on to me. Everything is working fine. I'm making good money, whatever, whatever. It's working. I'm good with it. It's when people get caught that all of a sudden that the police are bad and all of this. And it's because like now they're stopping what you wanted to do. And I think that, yeah, you got to be responsible for like, if you're going to go down that route, like 
it with anything. Like if I go and I decide I'm gonna be busting nuts off, I gotta know that uh my wife probably gonna get pregnant. I may want to start preparing for a child. Yeah, I'm using I might use a rubber and everything, but rubber's bust, shit happens. Like there's a, a calculated risk to that. So I need to assess it. But I think most people, that's the problem. They they take the risk, they've calculated it, but then they can't accept it when said risk actually happens. And that's where the problems come from. Cause then people start trying to part, throw the blame to something else other than themselves. And it starts in childhood, man. I believe the adults with that mindset, when they break the law, they have that same mindset in childhood because we all know people. We all have heard children as adults say, man, that teacher did this and this and this. This person don't like me. You gave me this grade. You yeah. earned it. Your decision was to do this. You chose that answer. You earned that grade. People have gotten out of the mindset of earning and getting what you deserve. People think because you participate you in something, you're supposed to get recognized for it. Nah. You don't deserve shit, you don't get shit. If you ain't shit, you ain't shit. You don't, don't go to work, you don't get a check. That, that ain't how the world works. Don't walk around thinking you the shit when you really ain't shit. Get your ass off your shoulder and get a reality check. People. Yeah. I, I'm reformed. Y'all think I'm smoking weed, but I'm smoking CBD. So I'm, I'm in a different mind frame than normal. So I'm, I'm rare this week. I'm giving y'all some shit. I'm rare. Juice. I'm rare. This is rare. Yeah. I'm rare this week, man. I'm giving y'all some juice. <laughs> yeah. I'm coming to the sequel of 2020, 2020 real quick. 2020 Yo, part two. That is a shirt, nigga. I'm rare. <laughs> I'm rare. <laughs> coming out soon. I'm rare, man. I'm rare, man. That is hilarious. But looking at my role, it's about that time. It's about that time. It's about that time. Wait a minute. What is it about that time? Let me get some orange juice. <laughs> it's about that time. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm about to roll it. He done left. He done ran away. And it got so scary because it's about that time, y'all. It's about that time, y'all. It's about that time. time. And if you a real pop spotter, you already know what time it is. Y'all know what time it is. It's time for us to get into the the good of the episode fifty-eight. Yeah, 58, big baby. The last one of the year. Last one of 2021. Season two. Good and fuckery. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to start the good and fuckery out with a warning for people that's living out Chesapeake, preferably the people in Western Branch here. Um, There's four bears spotted in the in a, in a tree in Chesapeake. Did they just up there in the tree? I was <laughs> a neighbor got a surprise in the tree next door to her when she woke up on Monday. She spotted four bears in a in a tree on Bruin Drive, which is near Western Branch High School in Chesapeake. Um, the resident Tracy Abbott told News Three these bears were in the neighbor's tree as as a Monday morning. Um, I'm a little concerned because they, because when they come down, what are they going to go? Is our to street, your house, <laughs> right to your house? <laughs> is that street going to stay blocked off the entire time? Wonder Abbott, who has four small dogs, she's keeping inside. Is animal control going to camp out here until it's time? Because they're afraid to just try to force them down, because then they might attack. Man, they try to get like, some dogs. Hey, into like the bears just come down and on their own. <laughs> so it could be a smooth transition <laughs> and everything, but. They better dart them bears now because the longer them bears sit up in that tree, the hungrier them bears gonna get. You don't want no hungry ass bears coming down. You better get up, you better get them up out there now. <laughs> Cause they come down, uh, it's gonna be some attacking for real. Um. I, I blame the climate change. I did not I, see I bl- that coming. 
I, I bears global. in the trees in Chesapeake. Yeah. I definitely blame blame on um, global warming because ain't, ain't they supposed to be hibernating right now? I don't know, but it ain't that cold outside. Because right now I'm in the seven five seven right now, and it's uh pretty warm. Every animal is confused. Shit. Yeah, yeah. I'm still seeing gnats and mosquitoes. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Here one day on the next. Here one day they confused like shit too. They're like, man, when the fuck is winter time? I'm like, god dang. <laughs> I thought we were supposed to be sleeping, mama. Well, shit, man. We got to wait a few because it ain't cold yet. Where now, is snow? Now, shut up and get up in this tree for these humans get us. The, the grandpa bear is talking to the baby bears like, I remember snow. Y'all mm-hmm. might not know nothing about it. but It we used, used to, to reach below 40 degrees. Y'all see and that's why we were sleeping for so long. Sun. Y'all get all this good summer. But the sun is out, so... <laughs> I was now, ice skating where you motherfuckers swim. Y'all don't know hard times. Y'all did. We're supposed the, uh, to be sleeping right now, but we can't sleep because it's giving not the cold. Dusty roads, hard times promo to the <laughs> to the baby bears. I know hard times. Hard times is we. <laughs> 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 Grandpa Bear, I did sound like he about to fight Ric Flair for the championship belt. Hard times, baby. Hard times. I know them hard times. <laughs> it is hard times for the bee and for the bears, man. Bees going extinct. They don't know where to get the honey and everything. It's, it's but warm bees out here. No hard times. Ric Flair put them through hard times. He took food off my plate. Hard times is when that coal worker can't get a job because a robot done took his job. And the cold hard times is when they shut the auto factories workers job down. That hard times when these bees can't get no sleep in their nest. And when these bears can't hibernate in their cage. That's hard times. And Ric Flair, I'm coming for you, baby. Hard times. I'm sorry. I don't know. Yeah, that, that big that, shit I got. that has nothing to do with nothing. I'm sorry. I don't okay. know. But in my mind, when you said you crap up out there and talk to us, y'all just don't know. I saw snow. You just hard time. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm sorry. People that's Ooh. listening, I'm sorry. If you're not a wrestling fan, none of the past minute or two is going to make any sense to you. But my wrestling fans out there, that shit is going to be the dusty roads. And Google Dusty Rose hard times. <laughs> I had a weird Cochise hat on, on his head. What? <laughs> Look like he got dressed up. Cochise. <laughs> you know, he used to have that hat. Like, he used to dress like he's in the 70s, but it was the 80s at the time. He, he didn't have no hat on. Hat. He had on a, a cheap looking mm-hmm. suit with the big lapel off, and he had the, the gold watch on, baby. And he had just hey, came hey. back from having his arm broken by the nature boy and the four horsemen, baby. And he was ready to come back because Ric Flair had taken food out of his children's mouth. And it was hard times. He didn't, Ric Flair didn't know them hard times, see, baby. <laughs> Dusty Road, no hard times. <laughs> On a name like Dusty. <clears throat> That list. I'm sorry, yo. This ain't gonna make no sense to nobody, but I enjoyed well, sure. that. Since we're still on, since we'll fucking keep this in the loop of it. Hey, y'all. To come see put dick in burger. Where's my orange juice, man? <laughs> Why? That has nothing to do with nothing. Why? Because this nigga said something about the matches some shit. So I thought the cups. <laughs> that nigga said Cochise, not Comanche. Oh, well, shit. <laughs> And now we're here. <laughs> Where we go? <laughs> oh man! Inside joke for y'all. Oh ass. God! 
If y'all have seen our left before, y'all get Pat, the joke. <laughs> Pat, Pat, reel us back in to the good and fuck me, please, because I don't even... I, I'm not even sure the origin spot of this one this time. <laughs> we were talking about bangers. before du- before Dusty Rhodes. I'm lost. <laughs> we were talking Hard about times, and then Three. we went to the cups and put Nick and Burger. Oh yeah. Um. By the line, if you oh, shit, man. Friends, look out for the bears that's in the trees because they're supposed to be asleep and they don't know what to do now because Ches- global Ch- Chesapeakeans. A global watch, out, watch out for pulling them, man. They out there. Chesapeake is. Yo, you out there. He out there in these, in these streets. Hey, boo-boo boy. <clears throat> um, so um we don't I don't I don't know if we're doing the face to screen, but I um a movie recommendation. Uh don't look up. That was a funny movie. I started they watching got- that other movie. Oh, it was uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence. She's the one that played like Mystique and X-Men and Katniss and Hunger Games and whatever. But uh, I don't know if Tiz going to be into it. But yeah, it's about uh, a rock in space crashing down on Earth and nobody really <laughs> giving a fuck about it. <laughs> and, and I thought it was so apropos that I just bring it up. <laughs> but the people a, in that movie feel about how I feel about it. Yep, I don't give a fuck. I'm sorry. <laughs> yep, yep. And I actually like them as actors, but I ain't heard shit about it, so I don't care. No, it's, oh, it's a lot of great actors. I ain't man, about to fake great. the funk no more in 2022, man. I my, my this 38 is break. I can feel it hard like that. I don't give a fuck. Me to the one up just another level. I I, <laughs> I don't know why. Like I was so invested into the Bears, but for some reason, when you said not in the cap, you should have lost. <laughs> Tyler Perry's in it. Meryl Streep is the president. Uh, Jonah Hill is her son, who's also Secretary of State. Um, it's 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 pretty random. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence starts. That sounds like a bad casserole. That's just too much shit mixed together. Yeah, you great. got Medea and Meryl Streep mm-hmm. with and, Jonah uh, Hill. Like, what? Who put this cast together? Man? What the fuck? You're all over the place. <laughs> what is Jennifer happening? Lawrence starts off reciting uh, <laughs> verse from Wu Tang Clan. Ain't nothing to fuck with. She recites <laughs> Inspector Deck's verse in the first couple of minutes of the movie, and it's exactly how I expect regular white people to recite. Versus from the Wu Tang Clan, but um, yeah, it was funny. Um, you got a next, long ass gray hair in the middle of your goatee. I do. Actually, I got it's like four of them in there. <laughs> nah, I'm sorry, I I'm all over the yeah. Look, man, I drank a beer tonight, so um, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm yeah. Rare. I'm, I'm all, I've been off meds for a couple of days, so I, I'm in. I'm in rare air right now. I'm in rare form like faith. I don't know what's happening, but between 38, this beer, and not being on meds no more, I, whew, it's going to be a lot for y'all. So God bless y'all people who got to listen to this, but um, I'm going to pray for y'all. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. I'm going to pray for y'all. Last good and fuckery of the year, y'all. Last episode of the year. Ah! <laughs> I don't know why I just flicked nobody off. I don't even know why I flicked the audience off. I'm sorry. I don't even know what that had. That was past tears coming out the hunt. Everyone. <laughs> just felt like a real cool thing to do at the moment as far as the visual of it. But then I ain't think about like the fact that it's going to come off like I'm flicking people off instead of me just throwing up like I'm in a cool picture. And then it's just, don't worry about it. We're going to move. Hey, you just look like a rock star. It'll be all right. Um, that's the yeah. <laughs> See? Um, next on movie news, but don't look up, movie. y'all. If y'all want a movie, you ain't gonna give a fuck about. Go watch. Don't look up. <laughs> That's what I got from the synopsis. Did I miss up? Yeah, because <laughs> I, I thought you was gonna hype me up for it. And then you was like, "Yeah, so it's about a big rock and people don't give a fuck." And uh, <laughs> so nah, I wish you had your reaction. Tells me, about, yeah. tells me what I need yeah. to know. It's like some real. It's based. It's supposed to be based on true events and tra- like. 
Because motherfuckers don't give a fuck about an asteroid that's supposed to hit the Earth. Like, motherfuckers don't give a fuck. Unreal, unreal. Like, yeah, one, a, one was coming nice close a few years ago, and they ended up they ended up going by the business. So. It's, it's, it's like idiocracy. That yeah. Oh, I yeah. like idiocracy. Yeah, it's like that. That's a fucking documentary. Right? See, that's how you should have started this. Now you're getting me so I like idiocracy. That was a funny movie. Mm-hmm. That's a funny documentary. Yeah, I, I think Jonah Hill have a like lot of realistic things in it. Like Trump Jr. or something, and Meryl Streep is like a female Trump. Yeah. Pretty much in the movie. And they try to politicize it because she got some kind of scandal going on. It's crazy. I'm going to check it out then. I'll check it out because you said it's like idiocracy. Mm-hmm. See, you got to hit me with them buzzwords that catch me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm like a toddler. My attention span low. You got to hit me. But if you don't catch me, you lost me. You started um, off with Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence, that girl from Katniss, and I. Was... <laughs> she well, won't. She um, won't good in them in them X Men movies as with Steve nah. or as well. Uh, those X Men movies. Didn't she play? Good. Didn't she play Phoenix too? No, she played Mystique. Who was it that played Phoenix? In the last, uh, one. I, I the Phoenix was movie. I think it was her. No, I she got know. killed by the Phoenix. She got killed by the girl that played the Phoenix because yeah. she was. Um, he's Mystique. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. no, that was Sophie Turner. They all, you know, yeah. they all, they all start mm-hmm. looking like out the way. Yeah, I didn't oh. want to say, but yeah. <laughs> It's like I can't never figure out which one is Natalie Portman or Kira Knightley. Like they look exactly the same to me. I can't tell them apart. I also can't tell apart what's the lady. Uh, uh, they they the girl. They was in star. They was in Star Wars. It was the girl that was married that was messing with Anakin, Luke Skywalker, dad, mama, basically. Um, Padme. And then it was her. It was her, it was her body double in the movie, but they looked just like. Oh, okay. And then uh, yeah. it's another two that look alike. It's the, the lady with red hair. One of them played in Mad Men, and the other one be in some movies, but they look just alike too. You can't really tell them apart. Okay. So it's, it's a few actresses like that. I, I, don't, know. I don't be knowing the actors, man. I just know their characters, just like um, every other black person in the world. <laughs> um, it's very rare for me to know motherfuckers' name in real life. So I don't be knowing movie people's names even. I, I, I know what they play in. Mm. I can describe them for you. But I, uh, I, I would say one thing that did catch my attention was the new Batman trailer. And I think I'm a little bit more excited for the Batman movie than the, the Spider-Man. The new Batman. This the Robert Pattinson one. Yeah. yeah and is this a reboot? Um, Is this like a new another, original telling of Batman? Man, or yeah, is this like a continuation movie. from Ben Affleck? It don't have nothing to do with any of the other Batman. It's kind of like the Dark Knight series or whatever, how they got that. That's like their own little Batman. It's like everybody got their own version. I don't know what to be W. Like, what? Well, one of them everything. This. It was one of everything. The, the, more, more, the more I look at the trailers, the more I like. I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of digging this. It's looking like it's pretty action-packed, um, just in general, or whatever. So I, Batman I feel like- has entered the realm for me that Spider-Man is in. I ain't watching no more of your movies. It's been too many of them. I'm good. I got the ones I'm like, I'm done. I just wish they would like do more of like, if they're gonna do a movie with Batman, it's gonna like, make it like one of the actual like series, like, like the storylines, like the major storylines, like if you're gonna do Batman, like, do like the I want them to stop doing Batman. Uh, like, how many Batman movies do we need? Like, it's other characters. I'd rather people start going like they do with Guardians of the Galaxy. Shit like they like finds characters that the average person may not be familiar with and give me a new story. Like, I know Batman. I got it. I got it. Come on, give me a villain movie. I take that too, but just something new. Like, I I don't want to keep saying the same story. That is uh they use that as a cash cow so they can make the other movies. So when they do introduce their characters or whatever, it doesn't work out. They at least have something else to fall back on. But oh, I know why they do it. I just it just makes me not care more and more. Like now I don't want to yeah. see no more Batman movies. So now you've lost a viewer. Just like Spider-Man did. You, you did you yeah. overdid it. Give me a second. No, no, I don't want a second. 
A what? Give me a what penguin movie. movie. Give me a penguin movie. Give me the penguin. I watch his movie. I rock with all the penguins in the new um in the new Batman. Movie. He's kind of gangster in that movie. He looks kind of gangster in this new Batman movie. But I I'll think they're actually going to make a penguin series. I never uh, see it. Tell me about it. The the penguin series. I, they, they just no, tell me about the movie because I'm not watching this shit. I'm done. Oh, man. I'm, I'm exhausted. I, I've reached Batman exhaustion. Like, all right. Bring back Blank Man. Let's you can't really movie. tell the story. To me. Bring back Blank Man. Bring back Blank Man. Bring back Blank Man. That was my superhero. Blank Man. And Medium. Bring back Meteor Man. Yes. Here we go. Medium and it was just rewrite, yes. rewrite Meteor Man yes. or whatever. Bring that back, man. Bring the Golden Lords back, man. I don't mean no harm. I'm Ooh. I'm good on any superheroes that ain't got powers no more. I'm done with that too. Give me a superhero if you can. Give me a superhero. Give me. An, I I don't want the nigga that's up the street that's real smart that got gadgets. Like, cause in real life they gonna get his ass whooped. I'm gonna fuck him up. I'm gonna fuck his rich ass up. I'm done with that. I don't want to see Gadget Man. I don't want to see Kick Ass Five. I don't want to see the the. No, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Don't give me the same fucking story, part seven. I, I'm done, I man. Somebody create something new. I got a question for you. Now, what if they did a dark reboot of Inspector Gadget? Would you watch that? Yeah, because Inspector Gadget ain't been done out the wazoo. Like, I'm not anti-reboot completely. Well, I'm I more, I, I guess my know. thing is like, Everything, when I say everything don't need a sequel, some things do need like a freshening up or a new take on it that fits contemporary society and stuff like that. Like, I do believe that. I don't want to see shit that's overdone, I guess. It's more like, I don't want another Superman movie because Superman has been done a million times. I don't want another Spider-Man movie movie because it's been done a million times. I don't want another Batman movie because it's been done a million times. Like, give me more of the movies that have not been flushed out. Like, I like what they're doing with even the Marvel Universe where they're constantly influxing new characters that for a person like me that's a casual comic book fan, they're new stories that I haven't seen yet on film. It's not the same, like even if, you know, like all stories have like, a, it's a limited amount of premises you can have in stories anyway. You got the hero's journey, you got the mystery, you got this, but give me a fresh character art like i don't want to keep seeing the same people because batman's character arc is what it is it's Uh it's all i don't care how gritty you make it i don't care how corny or or campy you make it it's still the same basic story person it's the same guy same with spot like give me somebody new like if you're gonna go there give me what's the little dude in from dc comics that got the target on his forehead or am i making him up target man I don't they know. They talking about Bullseye? But sure. Yeah, him. Give me a story about him. I don't know that much Bull, about him. Bullseye uh, Daredevil. Oh, well, shit. Well, give me a Bullseye story. Give me... Uh, what's, I you don't know that much one. about DC Comics. Um, Give me a full cyborg movie. You got characters right there sitting there that you can go off of right now. You ain't even got to be like outlandish with it. Like You've already introduced them. In a group movie, just give me his solo movie. I'd rather you do that than keep giving me Batman part 19,000. Like, it's DC. the same overall story. He gets Batman, fights villain, he's rich, dad, mom dies, he's out for vengeance, he's scared of bat, so he now embraces the bat. He gets a cool car, he has cool gadgets, he fucks cool girls. Like, it's Millionaire playboy philanthropist. It's I think I, it's Iron Man Part Ninety Two. I think this. Uh, they made this. I think this Batman. This was made because somebody signed a contract a long time ago, and they can't go out of that contract, even though it went into contract because they didn't know how far along the Snyderverse was going to be. The, we'll tell you the truth. The, the DC doesn't know what's going to work. Period. See, you they keep just telling me the why. I don't out. care the why. It's the what that I have a problem with. Mm. I just want them to stop. I don't give a damn why you're doing it. Just stop it. Mm. Stop it. Tell a friend. Well, well, that's enough on that. <laughs> what's that? What's that? Michael Jordan mean? 
Uh, so stop it. <laughs> Just stop it. <laughs> well, speaking of stop it, um, next on the list, Snoop Dogg is telling a certain company to stop it with, with their um, their creation, Snoop on a stoop. I see. Man. Snoop Dogg is taking legal. Is that like action. Elf on the Shelf, but they give you yes. Snoop Dogg for Christmas? Yes, the Elf on the Shelf doll has become such a popular Christmas staple that it spurred one company to create Snoop on the Stoop after the famous rapper. However, Snoop isn't happy that a company has scooped him up and created a doll in his likeness. So yeah. he's creating, he's taking legal action. Uh, As well he should. He put out on a Twitter, I have no connection to the Snoop on a Stoop product and we'll be take, uh, taking legal action against those making it and whoever's selling it. As well, you should, Snoop. I'm not mad at you for doing that. I need to figure out what is up with these random... And the doll looks stupid anyway. It does. I would not buy that and put that anywhere in my house. Somebody bought it. Somebody bought it. You about to take all that money, though. I tell you, you bought it. Niggas. Mm. Oh, no, man. There's a lot of white people that like Snoop, too. I can see them by niggas it. don't have a race. Oh, true. <clears throat> true. I also need to figure out what is up with these celebrities and these random monkey pictures they got. I think it has a, something to do with an NFT, but I've seen Snoop Dogg, Timberland, and a couple of other um random celebrities that on their avatars and um like on their social medias, like Twitter, Instagram, is like a third eye monkey or something. And I think it has something to do with NFTs. But when I figure this out, third eye saying, monkey. Yeah, it's a it's a a three eye monkey. Yeah, it's a cartoon. Oh, monkey I was like a third eye right there in the middle. And I seen Timberland, and I seen Snoop Dogg, and a couple of other um, celebrities with that monkey. I know it has something to do with NFTs. Is it oh. the three-eyed monkey from um, Jimmy Neutron? No, it's not Jimmy, Jimmy Neutron. It's some random random thing. And I uh, I think it's a random NFT image or whatever. Mm. And I think somebody's selling those. But I'm seeing more and more celebrities doing it. Is it this? No. Um, just go to, like, you can look up, um, just look up. Uh, Snoop Dogg Twitter right now and you'll see his avatar. Uh, I'm about to, he don't uh, have three eyes. He don't have three eyes though. The fuck who? are you talking about? He has gir- It's a monkey with giraffe skin and a camo hat on. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I've seen one Fucking and I've seen other ones. But they got that same... Um, the way they draw draw the monkey, it's that same facial expression. It's a whatever. high monkey. Yeah. Man, what the hell are you talking about, Pat? I've, it, he has Three that and monkeys. Templin has that. And I'm just seeing Three other, eyed monkeys. I'm seeing other celebrities. I just like, I just keep an eye on certain trends with celebrities and stuff like that because I feel like it's something to do with like some type of NFT shit or something like that or whatever. But I'm seeing more and more people have it up there. Whatever. Research it, Pat. That's what I'm looking up. I know. I just when I looked at his um his quote about the Snoop on the stoop, I noticed that he got that up there too. So that just caught my eye while I was reading it, pretty much. Yeah. But yeah, I'll research it and I'll bring it right back to y'all here. So I wasn't even really on the list, but here's something else that's on the list. So TMZ has this picture. And supposedly, it's Nicki Minaj running from a horse in Queens, New York, or whatever. They had, <laughs> they got this picture of of Nicki, and well, it, it's this. You can't really tell it's Nicki, but the outfit that they have up there with, um, they showing Nicki in profile. He has pink hair and everything, and a person running from the horse in this camera pic. Same outfit, same uh, yellow 
Jubilee from the X-Men jacket and pink hair or whatever. So I don't know what Nikki got going on. <laughs> but she got some fuckery going on with this horse <laughs> running running from this horse in the middle of Queens. Oh, well, that's hilarious. Yes. And it Snoop Dogg, uh, to just follow up on that NFT thing, it is an NFT-based thing. It's a, He's a part of the Board Monkey, Board 8 Yacht Club or something, which is like part of some sandbox. And mm-hmm. that's one of the NFTs that he's back in or he's purchased. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, and then he probably got Timberland on that jump and everything, yeah, too. A board, he got a Board Monkey Kettle Club and something. But, yeah. Yeah, Snoop, yeah, he all... Uh, when you brought up the um, the putting in coins for the metaverse and everything, I know he, yep. he got his own real estate in metaverse already. Yep. Him and Too Short. They are selling it. Well, I'm, I, gotta, I need to just wiggle my way in there in the metaverse. What the fuck you just say? Hmm? What the fuck you just say? <laughs> <laughs> I need to figure out a way to get into the metaverse. No, no about somebody buying a universe or some shit like that. He bought real estate in the metaverse. He brought the metaverse um uh, is like the, virtual land. It's virtual social media that Mark Zuckerberg is setting up. If you Facebook and Instagram is going to the metaverse. Mm-hmm. Like if you look at Instagram now, when you log in, it'd be like Instagram brought to you by Meta. They done changed and like it's their new platform that they're gonna be turning their conglomerate into, and it's gonna be like an online digital place. So it's gonna be like you know, in video games when you play like an RPG and you got all of it's like you ever played that game called Skyrim, and it's like all of the people in there, it's like a living world or whatever. You can go around and buy stuff from people and all that. Well, these non playable <coughs> characters, it's gonna be like real, it's gonna be like the world of Warcraft, but or like Sims, the game Sims, but. Or the Matrix, social media, resurrection. <laughs> so people go. So people are selling like digital artworks for this online universe, and digital clothing items for this online universe, and digital real estate, and it's going to have a value when this thing launches. So people, a lot of entertainers and richer people are getting in early and buying these things. So when they release, you then can make money Blows off up. of it. Yeah, like Bitcoin. Exactly. So. Okay. Comment yep. the Yep. Okay, so this ain't real shit. No, it's all online. Okay. So, it's like buying an outfit on a video game or when people buy like like in Madden when you buy like, oh, I'm going to buy this card and buy a new skill for this guy it's like video games it's like if you bought a it's, new skin for the wrestling game a new outfit that won't available to nobody else it's like that it's, type of shit but this is how social media from them is going to be it's social media gta yeah yeah so why i don't know be- because they want to be the first one to do it before somebody else do it but is it just it's another way to get money. The way I see it, it's, it looks new and shiny and, it, and people want to get onto it first because they figure that's going to be, you know, everybody want to be up on a new thing or whatever. So, yeah. what happens, so what happens when you have a major hack and somebody hacks the system or hacks the metaverse and your shit gone. <laughs> Same thing that happens now. Mark Zuckerberg goes to Congress, says he don't give a fuck, and they keep mm-hmm. it rolling. <laughs> mm-hmm. Nothing. Shit gone. You it. lost your shit. That's that's the risky. Which thing is why right I'm now. telling everybody to get the meta coins, and then when they actually release that shit, sell. I'm gonna give me a meta bank. It's gonna be a Sims bank. It's gonna be the yep. bank of one. I want me some land, some real land. I can step <clears> on. I, I don't. I don't like orcs. I boy. I don't. I don't be fuck with the internet like them about. Yeah. Y'all know. I, I've never seen our, our social media page. To be honest with you, unless y'all. Yeah, you. I, don't I, I would say have somebody that like is gonna 
just normally do that shit and, and know about basically graphic design parameters and all that other stuff for the NFT stuff when it comes to this metaverse stuff. Because, uh, like, then that it's like they releasing information on this stuff piece by piece. Yeah. Or, or whatever. <clears throat> so, I, I feel like everybody that you know, is rich enough to know, know what's coming. And yep. somebody told Snoop something and he bought some real estate in it. So, <laughs> and I think we're making the club. That shit. Yeah. <laughs> that mm-hmm. shit don't sit well with Face's old man sensibilities. You can tell he was like, what the fuck you say? Online, who's a what's it? Yeah, I, I can't. I can't fuck with that shit. <laughs> I can't fuck with it. I can't fuck with it at all, brother. Nah, okay. sorry. Everything nah. ain't for everybody. Nah, nah. I won't be I'll fucking be with this shit. Either, but I'm gonna try to find what, a way to capitalize on this shit. What What if you in the metaverse and you in your meta lane and your meta house and somebody try to break in your meta house? You can't meta shoot them. Yeah, you can. Oh no! Pull out your um, meta gun. Uh, Mark said, "If you die, like Fortnite." Die in real life, so it's like Matrix. Get the fuck out of here! Bro. I don't think he was joking, but are we? <laughs> Shit, man, fuck like, I'm good at video games, though, so I, I could survive. I think. I don't, I don't trust. I don't, I don't trust Mark Zuckerberg because when he released this nope. and he had like a um, a video statement, he was like in this study in his room, and it was just like books in the background. It was a random. Um, bottle of sweet baby raised by besides some books in the in the in the study that it's just it was like books books book sweet baby rays book book like the sweet baby rays was holding up the books <laughs> so, like, so and barbecue like, is why you don't trust this nigga what no it's just out of place nigga, what <laughs> I don't trust hey, it why's on your bookshelf I feel you yeah, I don't, like what? What were you doing? You just leave that. Oh, yeah, thing. This fucking sweet baby your blue shelf, I don't trust it. Eating. <laughs> Obviously, I think was eating better. Oh, you think he's? Oh, God, you you think Zuckerberg actually eats regular food? You don't I think don't he just absorbs stuff through the the metal? No, no, I don't think. No, I don't think he a robot or no weird shit. I think he's just an asshole. That's all. I think I, I, I know people like him. I get it. I think he's white vision from the end of WandaVision. Get the fuck, Dang, fuck all that shit. Let's hit this screen. Let's hit the face. Let's what? hit face the screen. Nigga, what? <laughs> <laughs> that sentence was all over the place. That nigga said, let's hit the screen, the face. The... Nigga, what? All that shit. Let's hit face the screen. That's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, <laughs> that, was, that may be the worst segue we've ever had. And we've had some bad ones on this show. But hey, fuck <laughs> it, it's, it's in the year with a good <laughs> anime. He struggled through that one. Let, let's, let's hit the face. Nigga, what? We going to punch some people? Well, this week, let's turn to the screen. Face the screen, y'all. Um, <laughs> we're going to talk. We ain't got no top five this week. It's a question I'm proposing to each member of the podcast and myself as well. If on a deserted island and you, for some reason, had electricity there, but you could only plug in a, a, a TV and a VCR, so you brought movies with you for some odd reason. Where that scenario? But what five movies or movie series would you bring with you? I'll start it off. Oof. Just to- I'll start it off for you. I'm going to bring Lord of the Rings series. Okay. The original Lord of the Rings series. The so a series movies. counts as one in this? Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. I'm bringing Lord of the Rings series, for the first three, not all them other ones after it, not the Hobbit, not it, just the, okay. the first three Lord of the Rings. Um, I'm going to bring mm, the Mighty Quinn. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm going to bring the last dragon. Does this shit on purpose? Mm-hmm. 
That's right. We're gonna bring the last dragon and the mighty Quinn. So my my top you'll three right now. Twice. Yeah, I'll get you one more time. Get to it one more time. So my top three right now will be the Lord of the Rings, the first three, the mighty Quinn, and the last dragon. Now number four. Let me see. Four, number four. Um. Because it takes up a long time, I'm going to say the Roots series, just because it's so long. So I have to <laughs> occupy a lot of time. You feel me? You used to there watch all of the root series, like all they of go, They go fuck around, be on the island, mad as hell. <laughs> but I'll be entertained. I'll be entertained, man. <laughs> Something to watch. Um, let's see. There's four. Let's see. Number five. Let's see. Oh. Um, I don't like the Godfather, so I don't say that. I'm going to say... Mm. Mm. Damn. Fifth movie. Uh, uh, just something to laugh at. I'm going to say The Color Purple. Yeah, you <laughs> my mammy! <laughs> Talk the shit out of her with that rock, man. God damn. All right. So I can roll with that. Said it's for that mighty Quinn bullshit. Um, Friday, Friday okay. series. Okay. Uh, All right. Harlem Nights. Ooh. Gotta have Harlem Nights. Um, <clears throat> let's see. The Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> okay. The whole thing. Yeah. I like yeah. Yeah, the whole freaking thing. Cause you say the series, you go, so, you go, yeah. you gonna get a lot of watch hours out of that whole freaking thing, or whatever. So that gives me more time for more black movies. Bad Boys. So I have Bad okay. Boys, Friday, uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe, Harlem Nights. I have one more, right? Mm-hmm. The original Coming to America, and I'm done. Mm. Good pick. Good pick. Okay. Really um, good pick. Oh, so yeah. This should be pretty easy for me. I'm going to start off with the MCU for sure. Um, yeah. That, that's that's all junk. Um, I'm going to also throw in the Nutty Professor franchise, the Eddie Murphy version, uh, off jump. Like, to this day, I can watch any of those movies from start to finish, and it's like a brand new experience every time. Um I would throw in, hmm, this is where it gets tough. I would throw in next Friday, um, specifically, because I can watch Day Day over and over again in that particular <laughs> movie, in that particular movie with Baby D and shit. Like, that movie is hilarious to me. Um, oh, isn't it the nasty time? Um, <laughs> Damn. Uh, from there, I would go. Fuck it. Let's go. I'm trying to be be special with it. Let's go the original Batman from eighty something with Jack Nicholson. Uh, I this like day, that. That's that's one of my favorites. I um, like that one. Pull that big ass gun out. Oh, oh. Um, let me get. <laughs> gl- let me get. No, I ain't gonna be sitting there depressed and shit. I got two honorable mentions. <laughs> I ain't about to be sitting there sad on the island by myself. Uh, <laughs> shit did. Damn, uh, Infinity War gonna have me depressed enough and did it. So I don't need no extra shit. Uh, let me go ahead. <laughs> uh, damn, man. That's, now, where am I at with it? I got the Marvel, the MCU, Nutty Professor franchise. I got my. Uh, Next Friday. The next Friday. All right, I got two more. Let me go with... I'll go with the Star Wars franchise. I like Star Wars. Mm, That was one of my honorable mentions. I still haven't seen the the three sequels with like Kylo Ren and all that, so I would still get some new watch out of it. Mm -hmm. Um, Damn, man. I'm stuck with this shit. I got you. The Warriors. Mm. Oh, that's classic. That'll do. Yeah, I can rock with that. 
that that that'll do me for that'll do me for eternity. <clears throat> yeah, I can rock with that. Honorable mentions: Matrix franchise. Mm-hmm. Damn it! What was the other one? Mighty Quinn. Man, get the fuck out of here with that, man. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody else riding with you on that bullshit, man. <laughs> That's an island you are on by yourself. That's a hill it's I don't understand. Going. Ain't nobody, ain't no recruit nobody over there at this point in time. Like it, it had its turn. The people who liked it is that they there, and that's it. Fifth Element, the other one. Fifth Element. Mm. Good movie. Good movie. Yeah. Good movie. You know what's funny though? Yeah. I can see me getting tired of all that shit after a couple of weeks though. Yeah, I'm, me fun- too. I'm, I'm funny like that now. Like the Nutty Professor, I can, I can probably still watch one. every day. That's probably the only one that I could really actually <clears throat> see myself. Okay, this is going to sustain me. Everything else, like I'm probably never going to watch that shit again after like the first week or two. Like it's going to be like, I'll man, like this. shit boring as fuck. Give me some new movies, man. I tell you like this I have over 100 streaming channels. And I have a collection of over 500 DVDs. I've seen some. I, 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 I don't watch that one DVD. I, I walk past them every day and look at them. I sit in front of them every day because where the TV is, they're positioned underneath the TV. So I sit there and look at them every day. But do I watch them? No. I haven't <clears throat> watched them in over five years. No. I don't be watching these movies. Don't be watching these movies at Oh, but if I was on the desert island, I'd be watching all these shits. Because if you remember the flea markets, Pat, that was like a desert island. And that's when I was watching all them shits over and over just to keep myself entertained. So I wouldn't go crazy. So I think my five old movies and that, I think my five will keep me sustained on that island. Yeah. It, at least I can find some other type of physical entertainment there or, or, or escape the island or something. But mm. don't fall in the volcano. But yeah. Hell no, I probably won't move from where I'm at. Shit, make me a little shelter. I'm good. <clears throat> I have a wild take. This doesn't have nothing to do with movies, but mm-hmm. I have a wild take because people mm-hmm. have been talking about it. And then um, let's see. Um, there is no possible way that any of these rappers can actually beat Jay-Z in a versus. Mm, okay. There is, there is no, I thought about it. And mind you, Tiz is the Jay-Z fan. Yep. I'm the Nas guy. Really, I would, if, if I see anything, I would want to see Jay-Z and Nas just for historical Jay-Z background. will smoke his boots. But there is no possible way that anybody can actually beat Jay Z in a versus. He has too much stuff. Not not only <clears throat> not only he can have like a Jada Kiss moments. He just has three decades of hits, three decades of bars, lines, and and, and freestyles, like three decades of random revisited hip hop moments or whatever. To um, face Jay Z, you got to be in a different genre. It would have to be a genre verse genre type thing. But you can't be a hip hop based artist and go against him because it, it's so many arenas he's went to. If he plays song cry, nobody, not a lot of rappers got something that go with that. And the ones that do, you can't go against New York, or you can't go against one of his old yeah. freestyles or his streets is watching kind of like them B side street hits that people like. It's just so many. Yeah, he has he has artillery for every Jehovah God MC and everything you throw at him. Um, people say Lil Wayne. I I give Lil Wayne his I, I give Lil Wayne his attributes and everything, but in in some ways I can see some comparisons of all as far as things that he's done as within the culture. But there's still no possible way. Because he has too many different types of songs. Lil Wayne punchlines and bars don't age as well as Jay Z's. Mm-hmm. I keep one eye open like CBS. See me stress right. It's still a line that could be put out today if you never heard it and would be hard. Mm-hmm. 
some of that shit Lil Wayne was saying, especially in them heavy syrup, time. heavy drug years, like that lollipop ish phase, like some of that shit, it was hot at that moment, but it don't stand up when you really break it down years from then. Like, so that's where he loses. The next person they say is Buster Rhymes. Now I give is I'm gonna put it this way. There is not that many rappers I can see actually beating Buster Rhymes. But if it is a rapper. BJ, BJ, and it's not even just on. I'm also thinking production level. Like Jay could, for a versus, pull out a Madison Square Gardens event for his just for his versus alone. Would that other rapper be able to keep up with the production level? And then you don't even want to talk about like, like. Jay Z got an album with the Queen of R and B. Whole album. Jay Z got an album, whole album, with one of the top producers in the game. If we just take just that, most rappers don't have nothing that can go into those two lanes and compete with the the songs from those two things. Like it's just it's so many places he can pull from. He got shit that he's never performed live ever. That if he play if he performs it live, the verses is gonna break. Mm-hmm. Like it, he has those type of like people ain't got that. They ain't got that at you. You ain't got that at your house. Jay Z got he one of them. He the kid in the neighborhood that like, ooh, my mama don't buy me that. Can I can I spend the night at your house? You got all the toys. Like, I got I some he- of them. I got some good stuff, but damn, you got all the game. I got Xbox. You got Xbox and PlayStation and Nintendo and GameCube and Wii and like like he one yeah. of them. Like you like Jay Z got too much, too many bags, man. It's too many bags. It's like it's like you know how you got like um, on some games you have characters whose attributes are like a lot like uh, I'm a Mario Kart, right? So you have Bowser and Wario and Donkey Kong and they heavy and they're like, they slow down pretty much. Jay-Z's like Mario. Jay-Z like, like Yoshi. You like Yoshi, but I, I mean- I got he, speed, as far, I got handling, I'm tough. You, all, you, you, you pretty much got everything as far as it's averaged up or whatever. Jay-Z is like that big ass hand in Smash Brothers. <laughs> at the end. Let me just whoop your ass fuck out of here. I'm the creator of the game. Like everybody else is the cartoons and then he's the he's the dog, the illustrator. Like I drew to you. I drew you. Fuck out of here. Feel free, um, um Pod Squad, if you have the rebuttal, I want to hear please it. tell but, me who's but, in the hip hop genre that can go with him. We still gotta go back into that top. You know, top. Yes, that's coming. I I just took the past couple of weeks off, man, for this holiday. So I'm about to get that bracket set up, and on our first show of the new year, we'll actually have that ready for the pod squad to vote over this next week. I'll be mm-hmm. standing a couple I, days. But yeah. yeah, I just wanted to pull out this wild take from Juan that um, no one is actually beating Jay Z in in a versus at 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 all. He actually said it in a um. I think it was like a Twitter space when they were talking. Yeah, he about, was on there with Alicia Keys. Yeah, he said, I don't want to disrespect me. I feel like he wanted to say is that would be disrespectful to me to say, hey, who I want to do a versus with. But he said, I don't want to disrespect these other guys, but there's no way possible anybody's going to see me on that stage. So, so and it's, I mean, I try to think. Please, myself, prove, please prove one wrong on this, but I can't see it. I agree. I, I tried. He now, mind you, Jay Z's not really my one of my top fives. It's Tiz's top five, but I try to be my uh, uh, as unbiased when it comes to stuff like this as possible, pretty much. But stats, I look at stats and logic, and the logic tells me that yeah, yeah, no, Eminem is not beating Jay Z. Nope, he, he may have got him on Renegade. Like them goofy head songs is not gonna match up with. Nah, with, you gotta remember versus ain't a versus ain't a rap battle. It's a catalog battle. 
It's mm-hmm. different. Jay Z's different, man. His catalog is different, man. It's just mm-hmm. I shoot you, you brainless. I you shoot me, you famous. What's the nigga to do? Five <laughs> to seven of the top producers in hip hop over the past twenty five to thirty five years owe their entire careers to saying they produce for Jay Z. That's how you know when you like. <laughs> It's he's nice made wonder. his whole career. It's, like you're not even a good producer if you haven't, if you don't have that on your resume. Like you're not. Like it's different, man. He's different. The, the nice Quincy wonder. Jones of hip hop It's just you don't. It's the catalog is too extensive. This what uh, Knife Wonder said. Speaking of producers, he says in a stadium in front of twenty thousand plus, he does crazy and loves and bring out B niggas in Paris bring out Kanye. Run This Town brings out Rihanna. Renegade brings out M. Big Pimpin' brings out Bun B. Give It To Me and brings out Pharrell. And then they do both, they both do, excuse me, Miss, brings out Kanye for Otis, brings B back out for Bonnie and Clyde, then Mary for Can't Knock the Hustle, then brings Beans and Freeway for What We Do Is Wrong, and then do it again. And then, the, and then goes into solo shit. You still ain't even gave us the the breakdown where he gets into actually bringing out Nas. Exactly. Like, I can battle you with the track that we did together, nigga. They could actually do a whole ver- That's why I said nigga, I wanted to actually Think see about this. Before. How many times have you has he done super ugly live? Never. If they even get into that segment, if he has to battle Nas and Nas breaks out Ethan and all that, and then he talks about leaving condoms on your baby seat live in your face. Like it's yeah. just it's just the types of shit he can go to is this hard. It's tough. At at this point, I don't think he would do that because I said I feel like remember that that time when he actually brought it out. He was his mom got on him about it, and he he felt bad about doing it afterwards. So I don't even think he would probably do super ugly, but it's just a possibility that he can actually do that. He has that Joker. So, but I'm done. That's my wild take. I, I have no disagreement with that. That's not as wild as you think, I don't think. Like, I actually fully agree with that. Pasqua, y'all let us know, but I, I rolling with you, buddy. I think I'm rolling with you, man. And um, Damn right. I just said wild take with wine because it sounds cool with wine. It's all good. <laughs> and like we're going to have a tears take, take right now. Wine. I feel like we should end tonight's show on this beautiful moment because we two minutes into it. And I'm 38, bitches. Happy birthday, Woo! brother. I've been alive for another oh, year. Oh, motherfucker. Woo! 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 Yes. And in 24 Same hours, age. we'll be doing this again for past birthday. And oh, uh, yeah. so, yeah, this is Capricorn season. This has officially started the partner's okay. birthday season. Uh, we go from now until January 19th when Face's birthday culminates our Capricorn partner season. So if you are out there, you know, I always start our outros with this, but I feel more comfortable doing it because it's our birthday, bitches. Um, if you want to, you know what I'm saying, support financially, send us a little love, you know what I'm saying, support the podcast, you know, throw us a little dollar or something, you know, for the birthday turn ups. Um, anytime between now and January 19th, please go ahead and hit that cash app, hit that dollar sign, partner tis one, that's P-O-D-N-A-T-I-Z one. And all proceeds between now, as always, but specifically, they will be split between us for our birthday fund so we can, you know what I'm saying, enjoy that and celebrate another year. We would most definitely appreciate it. And all of the support over the past year has already been appreciated. But yeah, you know, the birthday love being a little sub special. We done had a, a year. Everybody has. But for us three to have made it to yet another year on this earth coming from a place where to be honest, it was times we didn't always know that we was going to make it past, you know, 20 something, you know, that was, that was sketchy. So to be pushing forward as, as three brothers who come this far, man, it means a lot. And it means the world that I'm able to spend my birthday, not the first moments of my birthday with my bros. Love hey. y'all. Um, but yeah, man, if you want to support financially, definitely for the birthday fund specifically, hit the cash app. That's dollar sign part of TS1. If you want to throw us uh, support in another way financially, go ahead to anchor.fm backslash the partners, where you can not only catch every episode of our podcast weekly, but you can also become a monthly supporter. Um, 
helps us out tremendously. And you listening to the podcast on that platform specifically helps us out with our ad yeah. revenue there because we are actually monetized there. So please support there. Um, and then as always, you can go to buymeacoffee.com backslash the partners and sign up for a membership or, you know, donate as little as a dollar if you like. Um, that's buymeacoffee.com backslash the partners. And with the membership, you get a lot of membership only perks. Um, those will be listed there for you when you sign up. I ain't gonna go through it. Or you could just listen to an XO episode of this and you'll hear them. Um, but that's how you can support financially in that way. But it's the holidays. And even though Christmas is passing, there's people like me having birthdays, man. So if you want to, you know what I'm saying, look out for people, get some tangible, look out for yourself, be fly, flawless on your New Year's face. How can they get that good gear, that good apparel, that beautiful clothing well, merch? Well, uh, well, 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 y'all can go to rtreclothing.com. That's rtreclothing.com, spelled A-R-T-R-E clothing.com. Once again, I'll never spell it for you, but there it is on the back of that R-Tray clothing hoodie right there, A-R-T-R-E. Come on now, A-R-T-R-E. Clothing. Come on now, A-R-T-R-E clothing.com. Check us out, promo code. All caps, Pod Squad 83. Save yourself some money. Come on. Start the new year off with some fresh gear and discounts, Good baby. Comfy material, man. It's my we favorite hoodie. Hoodies. Pet look we cozy as fuck sleeve. right now. And yes. stylish. And now we have kid sizes in the hoodies. Now we have kid sizes in the hoodies and t shirts. <laughs> So, hey, you may have a yes. little person you want to rock some hey, R Trade clothing or some Pod Squad merchandise. Look out for your babies and look out for your baby Capricorns out there, man. And, and go ahead and make sure they style it right on their birthdays, man. Yeah. Um, it's Capricorn my season, kids baby. We'll be going back to school with some fresh AC 83 on. Yeah, and, now, and now we may have sneakers. So I'm, I'm looking at some bags. I'm looking at some bags, bro. Look at that. That's an thing. exclusive right there. Yeah, mean, you know that. Oh! Yeah, I'm looking at some things, man. Some things coming up. Hey, man, y'all Super better watch face years, work bro. over there. Y'all better things, watch things. face work. Yeah, I'm really trying to do this. This apparel thing, man. So it all starts right here. Rtreclothing.com. Indeed, man. Get your Pod Squad merch. Get your uh, Rtre clothing and apparel. And be styling out here on these motherfuckers, man. Don't let Pat be the only one looking fresh on you, man. Go get your shit right now. Go get your shit right now. Go get your shit right now. Go get it right now. Go ahead. You're sitting at home. You ain't doing nothing anyway. Go ahead and go to entreclothing.com. Uh, and yeah, man, and, and, and when you leave there, make sure you stop by all of our, our uh, sites to show us your picture of you with the merch on. Repping the Pod Squad merch, repping the AC83 merch, repping, repping, repping. Uh, we definitely want to make sure we're able to, you know, say and let the world know that you're down with the Pod Squad. So show us those pictures. And Pat, how would they even get in touch with us to show us those photos? See this? This is our Instagram. This is one of them. At T H E P O D N A S. That's at sign T H E P O D N A S. That is the Instagram, that is the uh, TikTok, that's the Twitter, um, that's Facebook, also on Facebook with Tiz Face Pat, are the partners. So. Hey, man. So please, man, like you got the website, you got it. Go check in, link in with us. And if you can't remember none we just said, if all that information was too much for you, if me, Face, and Pat just went too fast to it for you, I got you. Remember the partners.com. T H E P O D N A S dot com. One stop shop. It'll get you to everything that we just mentioned. Um, real easy for you. You know, you just click of a button away from everything that we do, everything that we provide. You want to contact us, you want to buy the merch, you want to get to the store, you want to do whatever. One stop shop. Go ahead, order the partners.com. Um, and with that, man, it's my birthday, bitches. So, um, I'm about to take off work, you know, like y'all motherfuckers at home do when y'all at it's y'all birthday, y'all take off work. So I'm about to take off on y'all motherfuckers. So uh I've been tears, one third of the partners, and I've been wet. It's the other third of the partners, man. And in 24 hours from now, I'll be 38 one. Woo! 38 one. Yeah. And I am a long whiff. The old nigga that's already yeah. 38. 
Yeah, niggas, man. <laughs> this space, man. Could have been anywhere, but you're here with me. Indeed, man. <laughs> we love y'all. Uh, happy birthday to us. Thank y'all for rock- rocking with us for another year. Um, we will see y'all in the new year. Blogs, vlogs, shows, live streams, all that good stuff coming up. This podcast will be dropping before the uh, end of this year, so you'll get to bring in your new years with the partners. Um, keep fucking with us because we fuck with y'all and we love y'all. We love y'all 100. Bye, bitches. We going to turn up. Give me a birthday blend. Eight. Hey.